bodies.
morning. I'm getting all choked up because I miss everybody. How's everyone doing? It's like it's been a year. Weeping pastor never stops. No matter, no matter what, it never stops. Anyway, I'm so glad we get to get together. Again, week two of the bizarro pandemic. Miss you all, love you all lots. We'll be together again soon. I do wanna say very important announcement. Happy birthday, Mel. I know it's your birthday. So happy birthday to you. Yes. We love you, yay, yay. Everybody say happy birthday to Mel. Happy birthday. So last week when I did this, it was turned around so I could see like my own face and what I was doing. This week I have Sophia behind running this, so I can't see anything. So um, if you're commenting, I have no idea, but everybody say hello to everybody else. You know, love on everybody else. I'm so glad we at least can do this. So in case anybody was wondering, yes, Tony and I still have elephant hide hands. Okay, does anybody else have elephant hide hands from frequent washing? That's all I wanna know. So comment, let me know, tell me. Is anybody answering so? Do they have elephant hide hands? So, everybody's saying, what'd you say? Everybody's still saying happy birthday to Mel. Oh, okay, very good, very good, that's good. It's a little bit of a delay, so. Okay. So, I do wanna take a minute and I do want to um, enter into a meditation before we begin today. And last week I was in the 50 Psalms. This week I'm in the 60 Psalms. And this is such a good Psalm because again, you have David, this warrior who is, has fought armies, has come against armies, has, uh, as a young boy, killed Goliath, as a young man, like, like teenager. Then he goes on and he runs from Saul for over a decade. And then he finally becomes king. This is a guy who gets things done. This is a guy who, he is action oriented. And this is what he says in Psalm 62. And he not only says this once, but he says it twice. He repeats himself. I am standing in absolute stillness, silent before the one I love. Come on. He is standing in absolute stillness, silent before the one he loves. This is what I want us to do. Wherever you are, whatever you're doing right now, pause. I'm not even asking you to close your eyes. I just want you to pause, stop moving and breathe and just stand in absolute stillness. Go inside yourself, feel the stillness within you. Feel God's presence within you. There is a way for us to become still without eyes closed, just by becoming still on the inside. Silent before the one I love. We can do this in the grocery store. We can do this as we're sitting among our family members. We can do this anywhere silent before the one I love. So let's just hold here for a minute. Being still, being silent. God is in us. God is with us. Mm. 
Do you feel that peace? Do you feel the peace? Just by taking a minute and being still. Just by taking a minute and being silent. So I'm going to read this psalm. And David writes, I am standing in absolute stillness, silent before the one I love, waiting as long as it takes for him to rescue me. He was not going to move. He was not going to move. Only God is my Savior, and God will not fail me. For God alone is my safe place. His wraparound presence always protects me as my champion defender. There is no risk of failure with God. So why would we let worry paralyze us? Even when troubles multiply around us, God's glory is all around us. His wraparound presence is all we need. For the Lord is my savior and my hero and my life-giving strength. Join me, everyone. Trust only in God every moment. Tell him all your troubles and pour out your heart longings to him. And believe me when I tell you that God will help you. God is faithful. God is still here. He has not left us. So everyone, join me in this moment. Let's trust God together in this moment. So we are going to enter in just a little bit of praise and worship. I'm going to step off and Joni's going to lead. So let's all join together. Let's worship.
everybody, I want you to join in prayer. Let's pray for those that are struggling for breath, just as Joni yes. said. I pray for those, Lord, right now in hospitals across yes. this nation. And I pray for breath to fill their lungs in the name of Jesus. Again, I pray against this virus that is attacking the very thing of our breath. I come against that in the name of Jesus. I come against the COVID-19 virus. I come against it attacking our lungs in the name of Jesus. I curse this virus. I call it dead in the name of Jesus. God, you are still a miracle working God. God, you are still the one that says, ask and you shall receive. You are still the one that says that you are more than enough for us. You are still the one that says all things are possible. So Lord, we, we curse and come against this virus in the name of Jesus. And Lord, strengthen our very lungs. Strengthen our very lungs to breathe, Lord, in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Join with me. Say your own prayers, even as we continue on for a little bit longer. Say your own prayers among your family members. Pray over one another. Pray for this nation. Pray for God's purposes and plans to manifest here on earth just as they are in heaven. There is no COVID-19 virus in heaven. It's not. So manifest, Lord, your glory on earth just as it is in heaven, Lord. I pray this in Jesus' name. We're going to go just a few more minutes.
take a minute and just breathe that breath in. And I just encourage us, you know, as we, as we continue on in this, as we continue to journey in this very, very bizarre and strange time, you know, there are little things that I do, you know, that as we're breathing, just recognizing, God, this is your breath. As I breathe in and I breathe out, it's your breath. This is your world. And even as we, we breathe, we're breathing just God's presence within us. And there are times that, that I just have to concentrate on that and just go, God, you're big enough. You're, you're more than enough. You're more than enough for this situation. You're more than enough for what's going on in this world. So... It's interesting to me because um, yesterday was going to supposed to be the women's retreat, and as we were praying, as we were uh, preparing for that, and and we were looking and listening and and asking God, what is your word? What's your word for the women's retreat? And the verses that that stuck out to me were in Song of Solomon: "There is change in the air." And I was like, wow, this is so ironic to me that yesterday was supposed to be the women's retreat. We're in this pandemic and there's change in the air. It's a very prophetic word for this time right now. So I want to read the verses that we're taking that from. And I'm going to talk about it in a minute, but I, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go through a couple of things first. But it says this. Can you not discern this new day of destiny breaking forth around you? And this is Song of Solomon 2, beginning with verse 13. The early signs of my purposes and plans are bursting forth. The budding vines of new life are now blooming everywhere. The fragrance of their flowers whispers. There is change in the air. Arise, my love, my beautiful companion, and run with me to the higher place. For now is the time to arise and come away with me. Those were the verses that we had yesterday. And I can't think of a better time ever than to run away to the higher place with God and to arise and come away. There are so many opportunities presenting themselves to us in this season right now. And I was thinking about this yesterday. There is opportunity after opportunity for us to enter into anxiety and fear without even thinking about it. Now, I know that there are those that are unfazed in this. I know that there are those that are listening to this and you're like, whatever, why should I even be worried? So I'm not necessarily talking to you, but I am talking to you in that there might be something that you can pass on to somebody else to help them get through. But as long as I'm watching the news and watching the numbers and watching what is what I consider to be fear mongering, as long as I'm hearing stories, there are so many social media posts that can freak us out so easily, you know, and forget about somebody who's walking down the street and they start having a dry cough. <laughs> You know, I just, I, I like run into my house, you know, or here's the biggie, the middle of the night, you wake up and, and the, the night feels oppressive and you're like, what is happening in the world right now? Or you have an allergies, you have an allergy or you cough or your body feels weird and immediately you start going, oh my God, do I have that? Do I have that? Do I need to take my temperature? All of those things, they're right there. You know, I think of the, the, the verse when, when God said um, my, to Cain, you know, sin is crouching at your door. It's like the fear and the anxiety just crouches at our yeah. door, just ready to spring yeah. in a moment. It is the opportunity now that we have to press into Jesus. It is the opportunity now to arise 
It is the opportunity now, instead of, of going with the fear and the anxiety and the worry, because there's nothing we can do to change anything. The best thing we can do is to pray and to trust in God. But the opportunity is so real now to press into Jesus. And again, I go back to Psalm 62 that we started with when he says, I will be still right here. I am standing in absolute stillness, silent before the one I love, waiting as long as it takes for him to rescue me. See, sometimes I think what we do is we pray and then keep moving or we just go, God, please take it away. But the invitation right now is for us to stand silent and to be still and to listen. You know, not to distract ourselves with other things, which is fine sometimes. But when those things come, I find that the only way that I can be free of them is if I just stop and I go silent and I remind myself of who God is. And I remind myself that he is the same and that he's still the one who loves me and cares about me. And it's not just about not moving. It is about being still on the inside. So, you know, there are ways to be still and to garden. There are ways to be still and to bake. There are ways to be still and to take a walk. There are ways to be still and to move. So I'm not talking about, you know, for all you extroverts out there, you know, sitting, you know, quietly. Listen, I can sit for days. Like, like being alone in my house is, is like, I can sit for days. But I know my extroverted friends, like, it, this, is, this is a difficult time. So you can do things and still be still. You know, yesterday, Tony and I took a drive. We didn't even talk. We just got out of the house, took a drive, and just looked at the beauty of nature. We were still, we were together, but we were still and we were silent, just listening and reminding ourselves of who God is. Alongside of this, there's the opportunity in this time to strengthen how we think, because here's the battle. This is the greatest battle that all of us have. We're all exactly the same. You know, there's a, there's a saying that I've been thinking about a lot lately. Suffering is, oh my goodness, I can't think of, I, I can't believe I Jesus. forgot it. Suffering is inevitable. Pain, Pain is inevitable. Pain is inevitable. Suffering is optional. That's why I couldn't get it. Pain is inevitable. Suffering is optional. So this stuff is going to be surrounding us, but how we enter into it, how we think our way through, how we spend our time, that's really paramount. What we fix our eyes on, I think of 2 Corinthians 10, where it talks about we pull down the strongholds in our minds that try to set themselves up against the knowledge of God. So everything that we're, the worry that comes, the fear that comes, the, the stuff that comes, all of that is the stuff that sets itself up against the knowledge of God. And in those moments, our journey is to go, what am I going to think about? Listen, I wrote this sermon, walked away, and, and something triggered me. And immediately I was laughing because I was like, yeah, I got to enter. Yeah. I, I got to change the way I'm thinking right now. Last night I was up at midnight, had to change the way I was thinking right there. So I'm like everybody else. This is a, this is a moment by moment journey. Even each day as I get up, I get up and I go, God, you're here with me now. You're here with me here today. Yes. Today we can do this together. Today, today I can walk with you. It's a moment by moment thing. So I was thinking about this and then, and then uh, Kevin Brisbane, I, I had a conversation with him and he was talking about this as well, is in Philippians 4, as soon as I find it in my Bible, so Philippians 4 says this, don't be pulled in different directions or worried about a thing. I love these kinds of sentences because it's like, okay, easy to say, are you in a pandemic? You know, but, but it, it's for all of us at all times. So be saturated in prayer throughout each day, uh, yes. 
offering your faith-filled request before God with overflowing gratitude. I love this. Tell him every detail of your life. You know, in juxtaposition to the silence and to the stillness is telling God every detail of our life. So it's not either or, it's both and. It's, it's sometimes you just got to pour your heart out to God and go, I am freaking out. Other times, you got to go quiet and go still. It also depends on your personality. I'm a more of a go quiet, go still person than pour out my heart. But, but he invites us for all of our extroverted processors, verbal processors out there. Let's tell him every detail of our lives. And then it goes on and says, then God's wonderful peace that transcends human understanding will make the answers known to you through Jesus Christ. God is a path. God is a wisdom, God is a way. And then here's what I wanna fix on. So keep your thoughts continually fixed on all that is authentic and real. This is Philippians 4, starting with verse eight in the Passion Translation. Fixed on all that is authentic and real, honorable and admirable, beautiful and respectful, pure and holy, merciful and kind, and fasten your thoughts on every glorious work of God, praising him always. You know, time and time again this week, I just had to listen to the birds and go, the birds are there. Yep. The birds are singing yep. God's glory. Yesterday morning, Tony goes, I saw a wood, I heard a woodpecker. I go, sweet, and? He goes, that's it, I heard a woodpecker. And it was just one of those moments where it was like nature, you know, God speaking to us through God's own creation. And there is an important part of us taking our minds off of the fear that we keep battling and taking our minds off of the, the anxiety, taking our minds off of the numbers that they keep throwing at us and, and the fear mongering that's going on and the conversation that's constantly surrounding this and remind ourselves that God is still here that God is still with us, that God is still the miracle worker, that God is still the Lord of the earth, that God still has not left us, that God invites us to pray, that he's still the one who touched the lepers and didn't get their leprosy, but healed them. He is still the one that heals. He is still the miracle worker. And he's still the one that invites us to dare to believe him. We cannot give up in this time of daring to believe God and daring to believe that whatever people say and how long it's supposed to last, I will hold that we can pray this thing away. Call me naive, call me whatever you want, but I am going to stand day by day and curse this virus in the name of Jesus Amen. and pray it gone in the name of Jesus. God is still a miracle working God. So the opportunity to replace our thoughts with whatever is authentic and true and beautiful and kind and wonderful and lovely and, and God given, it's there every moment. So my encouragement to us, my encouragement to me is that when those thoughts come of worry or even the thoughts of, oh my God, what am I gonna do with my children? Oh my Lord, you know, day, day six and I'm already at the end of my rope. What is the opportunity here? There is an opportunity for this moment that we are in, which brings me to my final point, And that is, there is change in the air. Yeah. Look, we can look at this time and, and think that like it's the end of the world, or we can look at this time prophetically prophetically, and we can go, what is that change, God? Because I do believe there is change in the, in the air. I do believe that there is something happening. There is no way, shape, or form do I believe that God is judging the United States or the world. I do not believe that God has sent some pandemic. I think that's a lie. What I do believe and what we all know is that out of stuff that seems so difficult and so hard, God pushes back the darkness and says, let me bring my life and my will in this moment. Amen. 
So what is God's prophetic life and God's prophetic will in this moment? Because I will say again, there is no COVID-19 virus in heaven. Manifest your kingdom here on earth, Lord, just like it is in heaven. There is no virus in heaven. So I want that, that uh, whole, wholeness and health to be here on earth. So there is change in the air. Arise my love and my beautiful companion. And by the way, this isn't just for women. God calls men my beautiful, my love, my beautiful companion. So it's both men, it is both women, it is both everyone, whoever you are, that God says, arise my love, my beautiful companion, and run away with me to the higher place. For now is the time to arise and come away with me. I think this is so important because there is a prophetic, this is a prophetic moment. There is something that is in the air. There is something that is going on now. I don't know what that is, but I'm listening and I'm watching and I'm seeing what God is doing in this time. So my prayer is that we would arise in this time, that we would come away with him and that we would listen and that we would, instead of worrying and fretting and looking at all of the um, you know, numbers that they have and how many people have gotten sick and what's going on, that we would replace that with what is true and what we know that God is and that we would dare to believe and that we would pray and that we would find what God is saying. So part of what we were doing um, with the women's retreat is that we were have writings that women wrote from our community, from our body. And um, we have a book of them. If you would like this booklet sent to you, I invite you to send an email to adminccf at gmail.com. And Dana, unless she has her baby and then it'll be Jenny, um, will send this out to you. If you are somebody that is watching this at a later date, or you're not even a part of our church, that's okay. We will still send this to you. These are writings that are about coming away with God. They are writings about arising and come away with me, that there's change in the air. So it's, it's uh, different perspectives on this, but I wanna read one to you now um, by Andrea Moore that she wrote. And it says this, the door creaks open and a stray band of watery sunlight crawls across the dusty but not dirty floor. You stretch out stiff, long, dormant muscles with a stifled groan and a great yawn. Doesn't it seem like our muscles seem a bit stifled right now? What time is it? The sun seems to be setting and rising simultaneously somehow. And when you peek out the window, it's as if the whole outside is holding its breath. Does it not feel like this right now? Your curiosity draws you to the slightly ajar door and slipping on a pair of sturdy and perfectly worn shoes you slip through. You pause on the other side to take in the door, noticing the feel and look and smell of the barrier that stood between you and what lies beyond. Mm. There is something that lies beyond this. And after a moment, you close the door behind you and what? There's a wind kicking up and laced through the air you smell. You're not sure. It's something so familiar that it tugs on your heart solidly enough to pull you a few steps down the walk. There is change in the air. Now is the time to arise and come away with me. So what happens next? 
What happens next? What are we going to do in this moment? What are you going to do in this moment? What am I going to do in this moment? There is change in the air. There is something more. There is something beyond this. What is God whispering to us in this moment? When I can fix my eyes on God, I'm excited. We're in a moment of the beautiful and the ugly. The beautiful is that God goes, I'm still here and I'm pressing my life in this world. The difficult is that there are people that are fighting for their lives. So let's, as the church, continue to rise up in prayer. We're going to meet together on Tuesday night again at 7 o'clock, and we're going to have another Zoom prayer time. It was so sweet on Tuesday. Whether you're a part of our church or not, we invite you to come and join, and there'll be information that'll be sent out later. We also invite us to be the church that if somebody needs help, Listen, week one, not a lot of people needed help. People were set. But as this goes on, more and more people are going to need help. Listen, drive by somebody's house and sit in your car and scream at each other from across the, the, the porch to the car. Take a walk across streets with each other. You know, leave flowers on somebody's doorstep. Leave toilet paper on somebody's doorstep. <laughs> You know, paper towels. You know, when you go to the store, call somebody, ask them do they need something, text people. I got a letter in the mail this week. It was so sweet, I loved it. it. Made me so happy. But let's keep reaching out. Let's keep touching with one another. There is change in the air. I can feel it. Don't give up. Don't be afraid. Let's fix our eyes on Jesus. Let's be the church. Let, let the church rise up in this time. Let's listen intently for God's voice. It's good. It's good. Let's pray against this virus. Let's break it. Let's pray that the unity that's been missing from this country for so long and from this world comes together in this time. There's so much potential in this time. Let's find God in the midst. Finally, we invite you to continue to give to Cornerstone. We invite you to give through our text, through our app, through, um, it's okay. My husband was bringing me Kleenex because I weep all the time. Um, through our app, through, uh, you can send a check to Cornerstone. Sophia's writing it in our, in the little message space below in the comment space. There's change in the air. What is God saying? Let's fix our thoughts and our minds on Jesus. Let's strengthen what we focus on, what we fix on. Let's be still. Let's listen like David. And let's listen to the prophetic that God is having. Just like Andrea wrote, what happens next? What happens next. I'm going to have one more song and then I'll come back and close out. You are not here.
so good. We are in the middle of the now and the not yet. We are in the middle of a testimony being made. We are in the middle of a time that we will look back upon and that we will be able to share God's victories and what God has done. And I can't tell you how much I look forward to a time when we're all together again. I miss everybody so much. It's much more fun to have bodies in the room here <laughs> and to be able to hug and say hello. So I want to close with this today. And it's found in 1 Corinthians 16. And it's this, and it's, it's my encouragement to all of us. Remember to stay alert and to hold firmly to all that we believe. Be mighty and full of courage. And let love and kindness be the motivation behind all that we do. Let's stay alert. Let's hold firmly. Let's be mighty and full of courage. And let's let love and kindness be the motivation behind all we do. Our purpose statement here is loving God and loving others fearlessly. Let's love fearlessly in this time. Let's help one another. Let's help our neighbor. Let's pray. Let's be who God has called us to be. Let's be the church. The building we're in right now is not the church. Let's be the church. Lord, I pray for every person listening. I pray for every person who may in the future be watching this. I pray, Lord, that your kingdom would manifest in and through us in this world. And it's just on my heart to pray the Lord's Prayer from the Passion Translation that our Father dwelling in the heavenly realms, may the glory of your name be the center on which our lives turn. Manifest your kingdom realm and cause your every purpose to be fulfilled on earth just as it's fulfilled in heaven. Lord, we acknowledge you as our provider of everything we need each day. Forgive us the wrongs we've done as we ourselves release forgiveness to those who have wronged us. Rescue us every time we face tribulation. Lord, rescue us from this tribulation and set us free from evil. For you are the king who rules with power and glory forever. Amen. Love you all. Join us Tuesday night, 7 o'clock on Zoom. Dana will have the information, and we'll see you again next Sunday. God bless.